Hi everyone, everything I write on screen will be read out loud for translation purposes. Let's get into it. Many people on social media misunderstand nursing and weaning, especially when it comes to how long it lasts and the behavior of both the mother and the infant. There are many factors that influence how a mother macaque nurses or weans, and these must be considered before judging these animals. First, we need to understand why weaning is important. Weaning is a critical developmental learning stage in an infant macaque's life. During weaning, a mother may groom her infant to calm them and prevent latching. Grooming is an essential social skill that infants first learn from their mothers. It reduces stress, maintains peace, and strengthens bonds. For a weaning infant, grooming provides comfort and reassurance. A mother macaque will most often wean when they are hungry. She may take food from her infant, sometimes even from the infant's mouth, especially if food is limited or not to her preference. This is one of the infant's first lessons in hierarchy. Mom is higher ranking, and she eats first. While she eats, she may leave scraps for the infant to taste as they are teething. As the infant gets older, she may leave behind foods she doesn't want and allow the infant to eat those. Weaning is the perfect time to teach foraging skills. After about six months, give or take, milk alone is no longer enough. Solid food becomes necessary, though milk still plays an important role in the diet. Weaning and even taking food from the infant is not because the mother is greedy. It is about teaching survival and independence. After eating, the infant is often rewarded with cuddles, grooming, and nursing. There are many factors that influence whether a mother is more gentle or more aggressive while weaning. Bites and hair pulling are often used to prevent latching, but they also serve a purpose. One benefit of more aggressive weaning is that infants build pain tolerance. This tolerance can help them defend themselves later in life. While it may look cruel, it is beneficial. The mother is capable of far more harm. The goal is teaching, not to injure. Weaning also encourages infants to explore, walk, climb, socialize, and become independent. After roughly six months, infants begin relying more on solid foods. Mothers will unlatch more frequently, and weaning can sometimes become firmer or more aggressive. However, some infants nurse well beyond the commonly cited average of 12 months. Many people feel repulsed when they see mothers nursing juveniles, but this behavior is not uncommon or abnormal. How long an infant nurses is shaped by how the mother weans, and how she weans is influenced by many factors. The chart I'm showing lists common macaque species seen on social media and the estimated ages at which infants may become fully weaned. Long-tailed macaques, the typical age range to be fully weaned is 10 to 12 months with a maximum age of 14 to 18 months old. Pigtailed macaques, the typical age range to be fully weaned is 12 to 14 months with a maximum age of 18 to 24 months old. Rhesus macaques, the typical age range to be fully weaned is 8 to 12 months with a maximum age of 14 to 18 months old. Japanese macaques, the typical age range to be fully weaned 10 to 14 months with a maximum age of 20 to 24 months old. Stumptailed macaques, the typical age range to be fully weaned 10 to 12 months with a maximum age of 14 to 18 months old. The maximum ages come from researchers observing them in the wild. As you can see, there is no fixed month when weaning must occur. Development varies between individuals, just like in humans. With macaques, how a mother nurses and weans directly shapes how quickly or slowly her infant becomes independent. When you see an aggressive mother or an older infant still nursing, there are important contributing factors to consider. These include infant's age, species, breeding season, and estrus, troop size, rank within the troop, fertility and abundance or scarcity of food. I will use two species as an example just for clarity purposes as I discuss all of these correlating factors. Long-tailed macaques can live in troops of up to 100 individuals. Each troop has one alpha male, one to three high-ranking males, and many females with their offspring. Females are ranked as alpha, high-ranking, mid-ranking, or low-ranking. Long-tailed macaques do not have a breeding season and can mate year-round. Females enter estrus once a month, lasting only a few days. 
This creates a very small window in which pregnancy can occur. Heavily nursing mothers are usually less interested in mating, and males are generally less interested in females who are heavily nursing. Alpha and high-ranking females tend to wean earlier or more aggressively so they can be ready to mate. These mothers often show the most dominance toward their infants. During estrus, they may wean even more aggressively than their usual weaning behavior. For this reason, the mother's rank is an important factor to consider when judging her behavior toward her infant. Alpha and high-ranking females also have safer infants. Their babies can remain with the mother's bonded females and family members. Rank is inherited and passed down through the mother, though in some cases females can improve their social standing through a behavior primatologists call allegrooming. Allegrooming simply means grooming and bonding with others. Because alpha and high-ranking females have infants that are protected while they are away mating, these females have more opportunities to mate and produce more offspring. While the mother is in estrus and seeking a mate, her infant also gains opportunities to become more independent by exploring and socializing with little to no risk. Low to mid-ranking females often have fewer family members and social bonds. As a result, these infants are far more vulnerable and much less protected than the offspring of an alpha or high-ranking female. Low-ranking females are typically less aggressive during weaning and show more patience for this purpose. Their infants are especially vulnerable during times of food scarcity. If there are more members than available food, an alpha or high-ranking female may kill the infants of lower-ranking females. While this is not common, it does happen and remains a serious risk. When food is abundant, mothers may nurse longer. When food is scarce, milk production can decrease, forcing earlier or more aggressive weaning. Whether food is abundant or limited, it directly impacts how a mother nurses and weans her infant. Lower-ranking females often avoid males entirely until their infant is fully weaned. If a male wants to mate, he will mate, but it may not be with the male of her choosing. Even if they are in estrus and nursing an older infant, it doesn't always mean the female will submit. Rejecting a male can put both the mother and infant at risk. There have been instances where a rejected male kills the mother's infant. For this reason, females often wait until their infant is independent before attempting to attract or associate with males. Because lower-ranking females have fewer offspring over their lifetime, they can invest heavily in each one. Instead, they may wean more slowly and keep their infants close. Their infants are taught from a young age to stay near their mother, which makes independence more frightening and often delayed. Another challenge the mother may face is that after mating, she may not conceive at all. Lower-ranking members can have fertility issues. For these low-ranking mothers, the goal is to have a successful offspring, even if it takes longer to nurse and fully wean. Hierarchy nursing, and the weaning process are broadly similar across macaques. Japanese macaques, for example, also have one alpha male, one to three high-ranking males, and the same female ranking structure. However, there is a few key difference between long-tailed macaques and Japanese macaques that significantly affect nursing and weaning that sets them apart from each other. One difference is population. Japanese macaque troops can range from about 60 to as many as 150 members. The most significant difference, however, is that Japanese macaques have a defined breeding season. For example purposes, imagine a troop of 150 individuals where 50 females are ready to mate during breeding season. Breeding season lasts only about three months, giving each female roughly three estrus cycles to mate with only a few males. This creates intense competition. That is a lot of females for these males to keep up with during breeding season. As with long-tailed macaques, Alpha and high-ranking females are mated first and tend to wean more aggressively. Lower-ranking females may not get the chance to mate at all during breeding season, or they may mate but be less fertile than other members and not conceive. With so much competition in a short period of time, Japanese macaques may skip that breeding season entirely and wait several months for the next season. This is why there is such a wide age range in which Japanese macaque infants may become fully weaned and why weaning can be postponed further than in long-tailed macaques. Using these examples, and for these reasons, you can hopefully now understand why species, troop size, food abundance and scarcity, ranking, age of the infant, fertility, estrus, and breeding seasons are all critical factors. They tend to correlate and shape the nursing process. 
Therefore, these factors should be considered when observing nursing and weaning behaviors. Here are some additional factors you should consider when observing macaques during nursing and weaning that can relate to all species. Other factors include mother's health, mother's age, long-term stress and human interference, short-term stress, social tension within the troop, captivity and hand-rearing, personality least likely, if a mother is injured or ill, she may not have the patience to nurse and her milk production may decrease, especially if the injury or illness causes her to eat less or limits her ability to rest. Physical discomfort alone can make nursing more difficult or undesirable for her. A mother's age plays a significant role in nursing and weaning. Older females may not have the energy to consistently restrict their infant. In some cases, the infant may be her last offspring, or her age may have reduced her fertility, which can affect how long and how often she nurses. On the other hand, a young, first-time mother may nurse longer with her first infant. She may also appear more aggressive at times as she learns how to balance nursing, weaning, and protecting her infant. First-time mothers often keep their infants very close and may isolate themselves more from the troop. Any kind of stressful incident can disrupt nursing, whether the stress is brief and sudden or long-term and ongoing. Stress can cause a mother to reduce nursing or stop nursing altogether. While stressed, she may display behaviors that resemble weaning, such as pushing the infant away or refusing access. Long-term stress can slow milk production or cause a mother to wean her infant earlier than normal. Stress affects not only the mother but the infant as well, which is why minimizing human interference is crucial. Stress caused by social tension within the troop is usually short-term. For example, if there is a male invader, a mother may temporarily stop nursing to remain alert or defend herself and her troop. Similarly, the presence of a nearby alpha male or heightened social instability can cause nursing to be interrupted. Captive macaques often display unpredictable or abnormal behaviors. Mothers who were improperly raised without a mother of their own may struggle with nursing and weaning once they reach adulthood. Researchers have observed that aggressive weaning behaviors are often learned from the mother's own upbringing. If a female was raised in captivity and hand-reared, she is more likely to display abnormal behaviors with her own offspring. For example, she may carry her infant on her arm or leg rather than on her waist, or she may show increased aggression during weaning. Personality plays the smallest role in nursing and weaning. Most maternal and infant behaviors are instinctual. While some infants are naturally more independent and others more clingy, most weaning struggles are a normal part of development, not a result of bad behavior or spoiling, either by the mother or the infant. So when you see a mother weaning aggressively or a juvenile still nursing, remember that what you are witnessing is shaped by survival, hierarchy, environment, and learned behavior, not cruelty. It is not because the mother is bad or abnormal. There is always a reason and a purpose behind these behaviors, and it is not neglect. Macaque nursing is not the same as nursing in humans. Nursing and weaning are normal and essential processes, even if the infant is very young or has reached juvenile age, and they are crucial for the infant's survival. Nursing and weaning in macaques is a complex process influenced by many factors, not just the behavior of the mother or infant at a single moment in time. Health, age, stress, social dynamics, and human interference all play important roles in how and when a mother nurses or weans her infant. Without understanding these variables, these behaviors can easily be misunderstood or misjudged. Observing macaques with proper context is essential to accurately interpret their actions and to avoid spreading misinformation about natural maternal behaviors on social media. I hope this video helped give you a different perspective on nursing and weaning macaques. Thank you for watching.